Good evening. My name is Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net, and this is another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, February 9th, 2020. It would be somewhat disingenuous on my part if I didn't mention last week's video in this week's video because I was talking a little bit bearish and I was actually dead wrong. I talked about a lot of nuances that I wanted to point out that to me felt like they had the potential to actually bring the market lower last week, but they actually didn't. It turned out to be yet another liquidation break on the coronavirus. Uh, market forgot about that very quickly and here we are back at all-time highs. So of course we're going to go over all the technicals of all of the majors and look at the implications for next week. Market profile will take our usual tour through it. There's just a couple of important things I want to point out. We had yet more VPOX and GAPs added to the list. So again, all that poor structure underneath us continues to grow even as the market stays uh, very bullish. And we also had yet another overnight high acting as the all-time high in the market. So we'll talk about the implications of that as well. The title of this video is actually called, Should I Buy Tesla? I chose that for a reason, to be honest with you, because I thought maybe we'd get some extra views because it turns out that's one of the most searched for phrases on Google this particular week. Well, I'm going to show you the exact area on the chart where I believe Tesla is a buy. And we're also going to point out something really amazing going on with the volatility of Tesla options uh, around here last week, this week, and uh, going forward. And I think that provides some very, very interesting opportunities that uh, you should be paying attention to. All right. Beyond that, I'm also going to leave you with a few trade ideas as I always do. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with what I was talking about in the intro in terms of last week and being wrong. If you recall, last week ended right here on this red bar. And because of the, the nuances that I showed you in the video, I thought we did have potential to go lower. So as I was saying, dead wrong, obviously, because we just rocketed up out of there for the five days of this week, which leads us to kind of a, an interesting juncture, I think. And I think it's a, obviously a bullish one, but I think that uh, does have some opportunity on the long side. And the reason I say that specifically is because you have a downdraft move here, and then you have the correction, which I call a 100% retracement. That's pretty easy to understand. It's just very simply when the entire move gets taken back. The way technical analysis usually works is that when you have a V-shape like that of 100% retracement, it is very, very difficult for the market to get back to that low point. Usually what will happen is you will just consolidate that move like this, form sort of a cup and handle, and you'll move up like that, or you'll just go sideways and then move up. But regardless, usually what you want to do is you want to kind of take this range and just cut it in half. And the basic rule of thumb is that you should not come back more than half. So that means that any activity of any pullback here is probably buyable. All right, you obviously don't know how deep or how shallow uh, it's going to be, but you want to use that halfway mark as kind of a line in the sand, okay? So that's the SPX. Uh, NDX showing a even more bullish pattern in that, re remember that when I was talking about the downdraft in the NDX, I had said that because the NDX had more room to fall to its respective 50 MA, I thought that it you know, could go down there. Obviously, as I was saying, that didn't turn out. But more importantly, not only did we take back the 100%, we went so much higher, which is very, very bullish. It actually took back much more than 100%, okay? Obviously now, is this overextended? Uh, you know, a bit, a bit from the 20, certainly a lot from the 50. Uh, caution is always warranted when the market is as high as it is, but obviously still bullish. Last but not least, I wanna show you something in the Russell, which I find interesting. This is more of a carry forward than anything, meaning you're gonna kind of stick this under your hat and carry it forward and just kind of remember it. But I do find it interesting not just so much that the Russell is so relatively weak. Obviously, the pattern looks nothing like the others, right? Here's your move down. The move up is not even close to 100% retracement. But what I find especially noteworthy is look at the potential head and shoulders here. This is a relatively bearish pattern. Now, you do have this weirdness here under the neckline that's kind of screwing it up. But regardless, I'm going to keep an eye on this rut and see if this is a portent of things to come and see if these small caps, uh, you know, continue to roll over like this. I think unless the rut can clear back over this area at the 16A, these small caps are definitely not a buy. And in the bigger picture, we have to keep just a little bit of an eye on them to see if they're going to uh, signal some sort of a downturn in the rest of the market. Okay, let's move on to market profile. I'm not going to 
take too much time with it, but there are a couple of important things I do need to show you. Firstly, that the all-time high of the move recently, this was a couple days ago in an overnight session, has been once again made in an overnight session basically. And that has proven to not be the high of the move for this entire rally practically since early October. I've been pointing this out that the market profile theory is simply that the ES generally uh, or I shouldn't say the ES, but auctions as measured by market profile generally will not end in an overnight uh, range. For an auction to end properly, it should end with some excess and it should end in an RTH uh, fashion on a regular trading hours session. Uh, so oftentimes what is a good strategy is simply to remember that the overnight, the all-time high happened in an overnight session and then be targeting it on any pullback. So be aware of that. Okay, beyond that, I do also want to point out that the structure that I've been pointing to for a long time, saying that the foundation on which the rally is built is shaky, that actually got worse over this past week because in the advance this week, it was happening mostly on gaps. Namely, there was two very large gaps, neither of which filled. And I've added these into the market profile chart here as number eight and number seven. So we now have this gap added on, which is going to be number eight. And we also added this gap, which is really large in number seven. Notice how little of it filled. The futures on that next day open right here at the green dot, and they only filled this little area, leaving this whole area unfilled. So we added two more gaps. We also added another VPOC, which is VPOC number 13. Remember, anything over five or six in terms of virgin points of control, those areas in the profile where the greatest amount of volume was traded in that day also could be measured as the greatest amount of time spent. When you have a number of those stacking up beneath us that have not yet been tested, that is somewhat of a red flag. Again, am I calling for any sort of a crash? Absolutely not. You have to play the market as it's given to you. It continues to be bullish. The coronavirus uh, ended up just being a liquidation break. When 100% of that liquidation break uh, was taken back, that is generally a bullish sign. However, these are all things to just keep into your narrative and keep carrying them forward. Okay, let's move on to Tesla, which is on everybody's mind this week. And obviously, that's why I made it the title of the video, because there are so many searches for this week. And the reason for it should be obvious, just looking at this chart, because of this crazy rally that got sparked down in here with its earnings report, uh, which came here, and then a couple days later, everything just kind of took off to the upside, and we had this huge parabolic move, somewhat reminiscent of Tilray. Do you remember Tilray, the marijuana stock that did this a while back, but has since come way back down to earth, and now is trading in the teens, I think. Tesla is no Tilray. Tesla, you have to understand, has much bigger revenue, earnings, etc., much bigger footprint. I mean, it's more of a, a real deal. So I'm not comparing the two companies that way, but I am comparing the price action in terms of it being this huge bubble to the upside, very similar to what happened in Tilray. And so the question on everybody's mind now, obviously, is should I buy this? So I think yes, to be honest with you. Generally with uh, stuff like this, there's usually one more run up, even if it's going to be uh, to a lower high, right? We may die out here somewhere, but usually there will be a playable move to the upside. So I always say keep it very, very simple. You just want to be looking at simple trend lines at FIBS and uh, moving averages. I like the 20. Notice that the 20 is riding right here on the trend line. This trend line I started right here from this rally, which is this year, 2019. Notice that that would put the stock about here to about the 640 level. I do think that is a buy. That area makes a lot of sense to me. Now, that's the simple way to look at it in terms of a stock play. But what I'm really interested about in the stock is the fact that the volatility is just so jacked up that there's tons of opportunity on um, either side of the chain, both puts and calls because of that huge run up. Look what has happened here. The implied volatility in Tesla has pumped to over 100%. This simply means that it is a uh, calculation that is showing you what the annualized potential of changes in the, in the underlying price of Tesla. It means that these options here, for instance, are priced in such a manner that they are assuming that the price of Tesla could move 100% over the next year. That's on an annualized basis. This is really, really high. Okay, you can see how here as things 
go down further in the chain, it calms down a bit. I don't remember exactly, but usually the implied volatility of Tesla is in the 40 to 50% range, not like this. So it's really almost doubled. And that, of course, gives you a lot of opportunity on either side of the chain. If you want to sell calls or sell puts, there's simply a lot of juice there. So one of the things that I always look at very simply is just look at where you have support and resistance, and that's where you want to be short those options underneath. So here under the 20 MA and the trend line would be a potential good play to be short puts. You can do them as complex as you like. It can be just uh, naked puts or it can be uh, in spreads. I like to do broken wing butterflies and ratio spreads. I teach that in my weekly options advisory. I always feel like that's the best way to go. There's a lot of different opportunity here. Same thing on the upside. There is still plenty of juice even up here above the thousand, depending on you know what your bet is, if you think Tesla's going to be uh, up or down. So keep that in mind. There's also good opportunity. Remember when the implied volatility is this jacked up that you can put on a complex spread such as a butterfly that can be very, very wide, okay? And these spreads tend to be very, very cheap when the um, implied volatility is high, right? Because there's so much value all over the chain, right? So for instance, if you wanted to make this bet, you could probably say like, let's say 775, 8, 825, uh, 875, right? And notice that with just with one week to go, this is really fantastic value, I think, is you could make a bet that Tesla is going to be within this 100 point range for the low, low price of $6.38, all right? That would not be possible in a much lower implied volatility environment. That max value here of potentially making a maximum value of $50 on this spread, right, which is the distance between uh, the strikes, okay, that would not be pricing at $6 in a more lower volatility environment. So that's where these things kind of get exciting and why when stocks get their volatility really, really pumped like this, lots of opportunities arise that weren't there before. All right, last but not least, I did say I was going to leave you with some trade ideas and I will. I'm just going to talk about three. I've got a list here that I just put out actually on Thursday evening. We have our private webinar for the time spreads and weekly options advisory. And I usually give a lot of trade ideas at the end. I'm just going to choose three from my list that I'm looking at here and share them with you here on the video. The first one is one everybody knows about. It's Apple. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's just the fact that you have this 100% retracement just like the market. And as I was saying, anywhere in here, it shouldn't go past the halfway point. This is also a very interesting to me inverted head and shoulders, right? If you look at that, and that should be bullish. So Apple is a, is a potential. And then I want to show you Regin, which is REGN. Again, same thing, just looking at these patterns that are 100% uh, retracements. How much is it going to come back? Shouldn't be more than halfway and go like that. Okay. And last but not least, um, Netflix. Lost my train of thought for a second there. Netflix, this is actually something that I have going on right now that we put on on Friday with the weekly options advisory. But I think you can still look at it on any pullback. Basically, I am targeting this 385. I did it in an interesting fashion. I did a 375, 385 ratio spread where I was selling two units at 385 and buying one unit at 375, and that only cost me 25 cents debit. So you may want to look into something like that, some structure like that, but whatever you want to do, however creative you want to get, you want to be targeting this 380 and have some short calls in your structure above it because the potential is that Netflix should go there but not be able to break through that 385 level next week. And that's all for this week. Thank you, as always, for spending just a little bit of your weekend with me. Options Advisories, they have been going gangbusters lately. I want to send a big thank you to all the folks out there that have signed up and have stayed with me uh, all this time. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy sending out real-time trades and text messages of, like, what's Peter thinking uh, during the course of the day. My colleague Scott Gillum on the time spread side of things doing the calendar and diagonal spreads also doing very well, along with a beginner options advisory that we have as well. If you haven't uh, checked that out yet, it is at shadowtrader.net. Just mouse over the options tab. And remember, the weekly options advisory and the time spreads advisory 
always includes Peter's pre-market perspective, my 9 a.m. Eastern morning market profile report for free. All right, on behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.